on a gorgeous Tuesday afternoon here at Mustang Stadium. We got boys soccer in action for you tonight. As the West Prairie Boys Mustangs look to build off a fantastic performance from this past Saturday night against Mifflin County as they take on the East Pennsboro Panthers tonight in non-conference action. Well, thank you everyone at home for joining us here on the West Prairie Athletic Farms YouTube page. My name is Alex Wald, the Golden Tikes of West Prairie Athletics. Here to bring you this exciting matchup in non-conference action between the Mustangs and the Panthers. The Mustangs 1-0 to start the year for the East Pennsboro Panthers. This is their season over tonight. First, first game on the road tonight for the Panthers to officially start the season. Let's break coming off a, up a fantastic 11 mil victory this past Saturday against Mifflin County. The 11 mil victory was the largest win since September 2nd, 2017, when they won 14 1 against Troy High School in the Midwest Tournament. We are about to get the starting lineups announced momentarily by our public address announcer, Matt Rooney. And what has been a gorgeous Tuesday so far, ladies and gentlemen. A few clouds in the skies, but no sign of rain as indicated on the radar. A little hot and humid tonight but it should be cooling down as the sun sets down on western Perry County. <laughs> In the win against Mifflin County, Dante Badia was the star of the game, and he'll be looking for more goals tonight. He was accounted for four goals in the win against Mifflin County, and it looks like we are about to get started here at Mustang Stadium with the intros, the a decent campaign for them in 2020. I mean, they had six wins, five losses, and three draws. And both teams are now lined up. We're going to send to our public address, or public address announcer, Matt Rudy, for the starting lineups. Thank you, Wayne. Welcome to West Perry High School. We are pleased to welcome the East Pennsboro Panthers tonight. We would like to remind you that the concession stand is off to the right-hand side, the eastern side of the stadium. We'd also like to ask you to remember that we have our sports here, to, so let's please sp show sportsmanship. So tonight we are going to start with the lineup with the East Pennsboro Panthers. We're at number 27. We have Andrew Bador. Number 33, Steele Bayer. Wearing number two, Cole Conjure. We have Gaddy DeMasip wearing number 23. Number seven, Carter Drum. Goalkeeper, Caden Gelb. Wearing number nine, A.J. Knight. Wearing number eight, Emmett Miller. We have Ben Starner wearing number 10. Braden Wentel wearing number 5. And in number 11, we have Zach White. And they are coached by Adam Bruder and Randy Rich. Now for your West Perry Mustangs. We have senior wearing number 10, Dante Badia. Number 19, senior, Evan Albright. In goal, we have senior stud, number 71, Brandon Washinger. No, wearing number 22, junior, Garrett Bartlow. Sophomore, wearing number 21, Dom Badia. Senior, number three, Johnny Clay. No, wearing number 20 is senior, Brant Fritz. In number 16, we have junior, Caleb Nickel. Junior, number 18, Kyle Port. Senior, number 24, Trace Riesinger. And rounding us out is junior, number 6, Josiah Twig. 
And they are coached by Jared Wiley and Charlie Ank. Our athletic trainer tonight is Coach Spencer McCrory, and our scorekeeper is Chase Reed. We are back here at beautiful Mustang Stand. We do apologize to everyone watching at home, but due to copyright infringement laws of YouTube.com, we are unable to stream a pre recorded version of the National Anthem. And that is not a Let's Pray rule, ladies and gentlemen. That is a YouTube rule. I know it's a real rule, but hey, that is what it is. So, uh, you heard the starting lines from our awesome public address announcer, Matt Rudy. And we are about to get under the, on the way under the lights. For some reason, the lights are still good night here for West Bay Boys Soccer. West Bay looking to build a momentum. A, a 11, 11 mil victory over Mifflin County this past Saturday night here at Mustang Stadium. And, and what was a total team effort from the Mustang 11 here on this field. Again, we want to thank everyone at home for joining us here on the West Prey Athletic Party YouTube page. My name is Alex Wall, the Golden Pipes of West Prey Athletics. And we are about to get underway here at Mustang Stadium. East Pensboro to kick us off. East Pensboro in the white jerseys. And West Prey in their traditional green uniforms. We are underway. The officially the season is underway for the East Pensboro Panthers. The first game on the road, they'll be at home for the next two games. They will start off the, actually both these teams will be back at home to officially start the division part of the season. Uh, West Prairie in the mid Penn Colonial Division will be hosting Shippensburg here at home on Thursday, Thursday night. The Shippensburg Greyhounds coming in town and then East Pensboro will have their home opener in the Mid Penn Capital Division as they will take on Harrisburg. One player to automatically keep an eye on here, folks, ladies and gentlemen, is Dante Padilla wearing number 10, as we can see around the 20 yard line right now. Pass 19, and there he goes, pass, pass 20, doing his defensive work here. And it was a great, great performance by Dante Padilla scoring four goals in the win against Mifflin County, the most of any West Bay player in a very long time. A bunch of people, a bunch of Ains came up to me this past, since Saturday, and they're all saying that, a lot of fans here in attendance especially, they're all saying like, even though it was just one game, this West Prairie team does have the potential to have a good year, have a really, have a really good year. In fact, like they're like a lot of fans right now, especially after the win on Saturday, they're expecting uh, this team to possibly make a deep run in the district tournament. And right there is a shot. Uh, 
high ahead of uh, Desmond. Doesn't go well for number 26, Cooper Bray, who just came in for the Panthers. Goal kick here for the Mustangs. Goalkeeper Brandon Washington. And a second start. Second career start in the varsity level for a sophomore. And now the Mustangs doing some bouncing around. The last time these two teams met was. Uh, was actually way back in 2017, back when the Mustangs and East Pensboro were division rivals, and no, oh, a decent, a good shot there. Poor Mustang just goes by the net. Yeah, back in 2017, like this is the first time that East Pensboro has played here at West Perry since 2017, when the Mustangs were victorious, three to one in that game back in 2017. When both these teams were division rivals in the Mid Penn Mid Capital Division. And West Bray later joined the Colonial Division just a few years ago, in fact. And, I mean, West Bray, I mean, the Capital Division in the Mid Penn Conference is a really good division. Like, you got teams like Harrisburg now and Camp Hill. Camp Hill, one of the best, better teams in the Mid Penn Conference. Once again, some good defense shown here by the Mustangs. And a very good run right there for number 23. Got it, Demasip. Oh, a bit of reception there by a handball. It's going to be called here on number 7, Carter Drum. And West Bray will take over on the turnover. Lights just starting to turn on here at Mustang Stadium. We are officially under the lights. The sun, a beautiful sunset here in Western Perry County. Sun setting on. Why, it's been a gorgeous Tuesday yeah. in terms of weather. Right now, the temperature just over 70 degrees, but a little bit humid. It's a little hot here, but when the sun goes down here in just a few minutes, it'll we'll start. Mustang Sale will start to get a little cooler here. And some fans might need to bring out a couple of sweatshirts or some hoodies. And, and some fans here at Mustang Sale are already starting to bring out their sweaters. Well, back, back to this win against Mifflin County this past Saturday. 11 0 was the, was the final score. And just a total team effort. Seven different Mustangs scored at least one goal. Evan Albright, Andrew Riesinger, Trace Riesinger, uh, Mason Sano, and Dalton Young all scored at least one goal. Garrett Bartlow had two goals in the game, but then Dante Badia had four goals in the win. Masterful performance by Dante Badia, the senior this year. Here is Garrett Bartlow now running into number 11, Zach White. Zach White is probably going to be one of those players to mention here in this game. Uh, one of the best defenders in the mid pen Colonial Division from a year ago. Or, excuse me, Capital Division. Here is Johnny Clay, one name we know so well. He also plays basketball and baseball here in you know, West Perry. And a shot here from Garrett Bartlow is going to be an easy save. And a couple of East Pensboro fans here are appreciated of that. So East Pensboro friends and family making the trip from Enola. Beautiful town Enola over there in Cumberland County. So it's off of works for a while. Pass here. This is here is Dante Badia playing cover for the first time. That's got to be a foul, and that is going to be a penalty kick here for I believe that's going to be a penalty kick for the Mustang. That was that, 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 that was inside the penalty area, the penalty box here in Mustang State here on the football field. But the official not awarding a penalty kick. Oh, questionable decision there by the official. 
an obvious tackle, an obvious foul inside the penalty box, but no penalty kick given. But we do get a free kick here in dangerous territory. I'm looking for a cross is Johnny Clegg, and it's a low one, and just miss it. Was well, Dante Badia right there? Swing left for him. And right here is number 21, Dominic Badia. That's Dante's brother. And a foul called. And it's going to be a free kick here for the Panthers. Man, I, I don't know. I don't know about that officiating. But official decision right there. Like, it, it was a clear, it was a clear foul inside the penalty box. Uh, the, yep, the yellow line here on the Mustang Stadium turf is, it is pretty noticeable, even way up here and all, all the fans. <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe it's a little different down there on the ground. First quarter of the game has got to go to the Panthers. <laughs> Corey can play dead and it goes through everybody. And I believe it was last touched by number 21, Dominic Padilla. And that's what the officials are saying. So it's going to be another corner opportunity. This time on the far side of the field here. The last things, first three games are all here at home. Took care of business against Mifflin County on Saturday and then that night you got East Pensboro here and then he start the hip head colonial division action against Shippensburg here at home on Thursday. And a long pass from Johnny Craig goes nowhere except to number five, Braden Wentel, East Pensboro defender. But yeah, that that eleven nothing win against Bifflin Kyle was the, the largest win for West Prairie since 2000, 2017 in the first game of the year, in fact. Like, almost identical. I mean, I guess, I guess West Prairie just outscores their opponents big time in the, every year in the, big, in the first game of the year. And a long pass in tail for Johnny Clay goes way over. That is going to go out of bounds for a West Prairie throw it. Questionable decision there by number seven, Carter Drum. So just kicked out of bounds. He, uh, oh, oh, yeah, I was trying to click around him. Almost like a corner opportunity here, but it's a long throw in. A good throw there by Dominic Padilla and a high header. It's going to be an easy save. For Caden Gelb. Caden Gelb, the goalkeeper for the, the Panthers here today. Very busy week here at Mustang Stand. We had cross country starting their season earlier today against the, in the tri meet here at Mustang Stand against Greencastle Antrim and Waynesboro. Two cross tower rifles making their trip up here for cross country action. We are still awaiting the results and we're hoping to get those results in at halftime. So we can let everyone know how Westbury cross country did today to start their season. Also, we have nothing here tomorrow, but then um, on Thursday, Westbury boys soccer they're home against Shippensburg, and girls soccer will be on the road on Thursday to start their mid pan Carolina division action like on the road at Shippensburg. And then Friday, Friday we have the home opener here for West Prairie boys football. West Prairie football in action here on Friday. And their home opener looking to continue their strong season despite having a tough Lost at Big Spring to start the season. And oh, right there is a beautiful goal. Can't see from up here who it is, but I can I have a pretty good idea who scored that goal. We're going to have confirmation here in a few seconds to see who scored that goal. I have a good eye on who scored that goal. I'm trying to read the number from up here. And 
Yep, there it is. Who else? Dante Padilla. <laughs> now his fifth goal of the season already in just two games. Remember, he scored four goals in the win against Mifflin County this past Saturday night, and already he has one goal here against East Pensboro, and with 28 minutes left, not even halfway through the first half, the Mustangs have a one up a one mil lead here. And right here is Dante Padilla. Dante Padilla get, passing over to Johnny Clay. And we're in the air for number 20, Brent Fritz. Brent Fritz, we usually see him on the defensive side of the field, but he's up here now on, on the attack here. Pass around all passing there for Johnny Clay is intercepted by the Tampa's Todd Drum. Todd Drum, he's one of those players that knows when the ball is coming. These Pittsburgh, yeah, they give they give up some goals, but usually not a lot. Uh, if you're looking for an 11 mil victory today, I don't think we're gonna get that. <laughs> He's Bensper on the attack, and oh, just like that. Intercepted well there by Mustangs. Here's Johnny Clegg now. Looking for Dante Padilla. Or excuse me, no, that is Dominic Padilla. It's gonna be interesting to get those. It's got, sometimes it can be a little confusing. I mean, yeah, I know they have two different numbers, but <laughs> they're, they're the same family. And now we're gonna have three substitutions come in now for the Mustangs. I see Sack Virus is coming in now, number four. I'm trying to figure out who the other two substitutions are. I'm sure we'll get those names as we go along here. Here's Dominic. Dominic being handled well there by Drum. And, oh, some good passing here, but right down in the middle. There is set that there's Cole Conchar. First time mentioning his name in the game. Nice interception there from Ethan Dodson. There's another one of the substitutions that just came in for the Mustangs. Here's Dante. We officially opened the action here at Mustang Stadium this past Saturday. Not, not with the boys' soccer game, but with the Perry County Field Hockey Tournament this past Saturday, which was won by Greenwood. Greenwood winning the Perry County Field Hockey Championship for the seventh year in a row, and also their 19th Perry County Championship in the last 21 years. That's how dominant per Greenwood uh, field hockey has been in the last several years. Good pass there by the brothers. There's Ethan Dodson. Found the Cadea passing it back to the defense. There's Dominic. A high pass looking for number 19, Evan Albright, who I believe just came in for the Mustangs. Dominic. Dominic the Dean passing a high ball, a good run there by his brother Dante, or excuse me, no, that's number 24, Trace Reesinger. First time mentioning his name in the game. Trace Reesinger, he's one of those players that he doesn't usually do a whole lot, but whenever he gets hot, he gets hot. And he can, he can really put a number against the opposing team. Here is Zach Byers. On pass and oh, a good bounce back here for Garrett Bartlow. He scored two goals in the win against Mifflin County. And, oh, big mistake there by Dominic Medea. And the through ball is not going to be successful instead. And since Josiah Trake is going to clear it out for 
Panther Roman. Dominic. I have ball here gonna go out of bounds for another East Pennsboro throw. Throw in off the head of Sack Byers. Good run here for Sack White. Sack White is one of those players that can do it all. Like he's one of the defenders. He can also do um, midfield and he can also attack well as well. He's a good striker. Sack White is going to be on one side of the field. Next thing you know, he's going to be on the other side. And there's a clean tackle there by White. Getting away from Dante. From Dante. One thing that a lot of fans have been talking about since the win on since the game against Bedford County on Saturday is that the Badia brothers, Dante and Dominic, I mean, they have been playing soccer for their whole lives. And they always work well with it, with each other. They they always know where the other is gonna be. And with that kind of pair, this Mustang team can be very hard to beat this year. And, and of course they're gonna be matched up with some of the better teams like Shippensburg on Thursday and then eventually later in the season they're gonna pair up with North and York then. A returning state finalist, the North and York Polar Bears, and what an unbelievable, unbelievable season they had a year ago. Make it all the way to the state championship game at Hershey Park Stadium in Hershey. But losing in the state championship game 2 to 1 against Mars from District 7 in the Pittsburgh area. And free kick delivered right to. Dante Padilla, Dante Padilla, he didn't have to move, he just he, uh, pass was taken right there and, and now a dangerous tackle there right just outside the penalty box. And no foul given. Is this is this gonna be one of the one of those games that the officials just let the kids play? And so far it has been. Uh, almost halfway through the first half. Here's Dominic. And Dominic, oh, big tackle there. And good sportsmanship there, shown by number 10, Ben Stammer. And a free kick given around the 43 yard line here. 43, 42. Dominic Radia with the free kick. Uh, laser right at the net, but an easy save. An easy save for Kid and Go. We are halfway through the first half, which is right now a good time for our trivia question for today. If if you're watching us for the first time this year, every broadcast we have since we are working for a school, we, we thought we I have everyone learned something, so we're going to have one trivia question for every broadcast we have this year. And today's trivia question is in the form of a Jeopardy question. This 2012 West Perry graduate is the current all-time leader in points scored with 236 career points. His 94 points and 41 goals are also the most in a single season when he did that in his senior year. Once again, your West Prairie Athletic Farmers trivia question of the day of the game is, this 2012 West Prairie graduate is the current all-time leader in points scored with 236 career points. His 94 points and 41 goals are also the most in a single season in his senior year. The answer will be coming up at halftime. Man, we got, we got a good trivia question coming up here on Thursday. <laughs> Something that I just learned tonight from our 
West Prairie head coach, Jared Wibley. Yeah. <laughs> 18 minutes and 20 seconds left to go in the first half. And Header coming off of Josiah Twig, and it's going to be a corner opportunity, a third quarter kick here for East Pensboro. West Prairie hasn't had any so far in this game. Corner kick played in off the head of East Pensboro. Of a Panther, that was number 23, I believe. Yep, Gady to Mesa. And just goes wide, wide left though. The net. West Perry, for the most part, has dominated on on possession, but it's been a pretty good mix so far for both teams on possession. But the Mustangs, with a 1-0 lead, just passed halfway through the first half. Free kick here for the Mustangs. Earlier today, the just before this game, the Junior Varsity Boys Soccer Mustangs had a nice 3-0 win against East Princeboro JV here in Mustang Stadium. That's the second win of the year for the Mustangs with a pair of 3-0 victories. One against Mifflin County and here today against East Princeboro. 2-0 two, two and oh to start for West Prairie JV. West Prairie soccer has always been a good, a good tradition here at West Prairie. Before last year, the Mustangs made it to the district championships before losing in the first round to Co Calico. And it's been a very long time since the Mustangs made it to the district playoffs before that in 2019. But this year, with the, with the Mustangs, I mean, it looks like they're in pretty good shape. I mean, I know it's only the second game tonight, but the Mustangs, especially now with District 3, having a full slate of playoffs, regular number of teams, in this case, 16. The Mustangs, I mean, they could have a shot. After their win, they are currently ranked fourth in the District 3 AAA rank, power rankings. And a win here today could boost them up after just the second game. And a long shot for Dante Padilla off the pass of Tony Clay. We got a few, a couple of students, not as many as we had this past Saturday, but we got a few West Prairie students here in the stands. Going on, and I think they just celebrated what was possibly a field goal there for Dante Padilla. <laughs> All off the head of Bryce Turok, who just came in for the Mustangs. Bryce Turok, one of the veteran defenders for the Mustangs. Johnny Clay. Johnny Clay. Yeah, Barlow, fine. Drop, looking for Johnny Clay. Clay. Nice interception for Braden Wintel. Good, AJ. Johnny Clay being defended well by Emmett Miller. It's Bensboro on the attack, but great, great defense by Josiah Twig. And that is going to go out 
for a West Pride throw and good defense shown there by Josiah Twig. Josiah Twig, a junior this year. Josiah Twig, also a, a good basketball player and a good baseball player as well. And if you know baseball, we, we might see him here later, later in this game, but Mason Sano, a freshman this year. And, oh, no, a good run here for and, Oh, that ball just got away from Trace Breeson. A good opportunity for the Mustangs to go up. He's hungry. Two minutes there, but a wasted opportunity there for Tra Trace Breesinger. And it's a goal kick for the Panthers. Now, some of you watching at home may, may be wondering, the goalkeeper for East Pennsboro, Caden Gell, is wearing neon green. And this past Saturday, there was an incident with the goalkeeper. Now, a 2-0 attack here, and a great save there by Gell, a great shot by Trace Bracinger. Man, right to him. I mean, Gell was down there on his back making that save. And now it's, now it's East Pensboro on the attack here. Man, that was bang of horror. I mean, you got Trace Bruton and Garrett Bartlow neck and neck there inside the penalty box with two panels around them. That could have been a very easy goal. But wow, what a great save by Caden Gelb. Caden Gelb's parents in the stand tonight. They're very appreciative of that. West Burr and East Pensboro, many, many years ago, especially when I was in school here, East Pensboro and West Burr in every sport was always a huge rivalry. But now West Burr, mostly a mid pen colonial division school, they, they don't get to face East Pensboro much anymore. And this was, this used to be a big rivalry, ladies and gentlemen. I remember so well over the years, especially on the baseball, baseball team when he played East Pensboro, and it was always a tough atmosphere, a tough atmosphere there in East Pensboro, and they, they they always fought hard. They, they fought hard, hard and, and mo most of it was clean, I should say, but uh, it was always a good rivalry. It was always a very good rivalry between West Prairie and East Pensboro, especially in baseball. And East Pensboro now one of the best baseball programs in the state right now. Tony Clegg, losing it there. Good defense shown there by Carter Drum. And West Bray is going to get the throw it. Throw here to Dante Padilla. And just over the head of Trace Racing. I don't think Trace was ready for the high pass. He probably could have jumped up and had a good header right in front of the net. And no attempt. Ten minutes left to go here in the first half. West Bray maintaining a one nil lead. Johnny Clegg after passing Dante Badia and playing looking for Badia, but intercepted by Brayden Wento. Oh, good defense shown there by Wento again. Lento finds some excellent defense so far for the Panthers. Except right there, the intercept there by Dante Padilla. Dante Padilla has been everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. He's been in the right spot, making, I think right now, f three interceptions so far in this game. A free kick given here to the Mustangs. A dangerous spot here, right at the 22-yard line. And it looks like Trace Reisinger has got to be the man to take it. Good spot here for him, Mustangs. So you, you take a look at the goalkeeper right now at the, on your screen, right on the far right. And now he's moving around. I was going to say, if he stayed right where he was, that would have been a good opportunity to score from the left. 
and a high bounce on that, a dive, not, not a very necessary dive for Gal, but it goes right through the goal post here, and it's got to be a goal kick. Good effort there by Trace Brisson. Again, through a ball here for number 19. We don't have a number 19 here on the roster. Good clearance there from Josiah Quick. Well, I guess we do have a 19. Not Jake Moore was, Jacob Moore was number 19 there. Good run there for East Pensboro, but now the ball goes way out for a West Prairie throwing. Good, good defense shown here by the Mustangs so far in this game. Sort of gave up a couple of quarter opportunities, and, but only four shots on goal here for East Pensboro. And then again, just about the same for the Mustangs, uh, they have a one mil lead. Good to run here for more and good turns there by the Mustangs. Good job by Brent Fritz. Brent Fritz, but something we don't usually see from him. He's been all over the place today on defense and on offense. Taken up by Sock White. And taken away by Johnny Craig, but intercepted right back. Oh, run here for Trace Griesinger. Johnny Craig, running for Dante. Or no, excuse me, that was Trace Griesinger and go! Number 22, Garrett Bartlow with the goal. And it's now 2-0. That's now Bartlow's third goal of the season. And with just over six minutes left to go in the first half, the Mustangs now have a two-goal lead. Officials not ready for the for the restart, and here we go. Now, Pampers needs something to do here. The last time that East Pensboro has lost the opening game, and we still got an entire second half yet to go, but the last time East Pensboro had a season opening loss, you gotta go away. You gotta go back a little bit. And good defense shown there by Kyle Port. Kyle Port meant a starter, but the first time mentioning his name in the game. Defense shown here by Josiah Twig. And Josiah Twig, oh no. Uh, defensive foul there, foul called on A.J. Knight. A.J. Knight, mentioning, first time mentioning his name in the game. Free kick here for the Mustangs. Could be looking for a long cross here. Usually ghosts like these do not come around so often, but they do happen. Instead of going for a crossing, oh, and oh, that's gotta be a foul. Foul on the Mustangs, man. Fresh for decision for Gell, but the Panthers got a big break right there. Running right into the goalkeeper. Was yes, Mason Sando, Mason Sando in the game now. And so, commit a foul. It makes it sound like it didn't touch the goalkeeper. I mean, that was interference right there, obviously. That would have easily been a free, a free goal lead for the Mustangs. But 
Man, again, go up on the old office hands. And they took an easy drive. And now, an opportunity here for Dominic Padilla. His shot gets blocked. And another shot, no good. Four minutes left to go here in the first half. I ball off of Dante Padilla. Trace Bracefinger has easily intercepted there by the Panthers. And right there is Port, Kyle Port. Dominic. Back to Dante and Dominic working well together, the two brothers. And back to Dante. Over to his brother Dominic. Over to Josiah Twip. Long pass from the lieutenant for Mason Sano. Josiah Twip able to keep in balance and Dante Rodriguez is going to grab it, but right there to stop him was Wento. And oh, that, that didn't sound like that ball was just off the boot. Right off of Dante's boot there. And yeah, I think I was correct. It's got to be a throw in here for the Panthers. Ball lost touch by Dante Padilla. And, oh, aggressive throw in there for number 33, Steel Bear. That was an awesome name, by the way. Steel Bear. I mean, Steel. I mean, that, that's an awesome name. <laughs> Up a ball, got away from the East Bend Pro defenders, and, and now Gell has no choice but to clear it out. High pressure shown there by Sano. Mason Sound, the son of West Perry, West Perry varsity baseball coach Jeff Sano, in the stands. And Dominic working well. Dominic running right, right into East Pennsylvania. And oh, shot from Dante right off the face of number 19, Jacob Moore. Uh, here's Dominic looking for the cross, looking for Mason Sano, and a header off of Sano, and it's a foul, a free kick. For East Pennsboro, man, Mason Sano, that was good opportunities. Mason Sano had a, had a go in a junior varsity game earlier today in the win against East Pennsboro. So Mason Sano, he also had a go in the win against Mifflin County to make it 10 mil. So Mason Sano, just a freshman, but. All right, make an impression here for Westbury Boys Soccer. Which I'm, I'm hoping that he'll play baseball for his, for his father, Jeff. <laughs> and yeah, Mason Sam, that's probably got to be one, one of the names to remember in these next four years, ladies and gentlemen. But right now, it's a total team effort there for, for the Mustangs as time runs out here in the first half. Garrett Barlow and Dante Padilla each scoring one goal to make it two mil. We'll be right back in two minutes for the West Prairie Athletic Partners Halftime Report. You're watching West Prairie Boys Soccer against East Pennsboro exclusively on the West Prairie Athletic Partners YouTube page. Your score at halftime, West Perry 2. East Pennsboro Mail. We'll be right back in a minute and 45 seconds.
We are back here with the West Prairie Athletic Farms halftime report. 2 0 is the score here for West Prairie. Good go two, one goal from Garrett Bartlow and another goal from Dante Padilla. Dante Padilla scoring his fifth goal of the year after scoring four in the win against Fifteen County this past Saturday. And Garrett Bartlow scoring his third goal of the year. He scored two goals in the win against Griffin Kyle on Saturday. But West Bray had more opportunities later in, late towards the halftime. But it's been a very good game so far here. Good defensive performance, especially for the Mustangs. West Bray, I mean, I know it's only in the second game, but they, they still haven't given up one goal yet this season. We're only in the second game, but that is probably that's, that's, that zero in defense is probably going to go away eventually. Maybe even on Thursday when West Perry hosts Shippensburg to start the Mid Pen Colonial Division season. But right now, we have the answer to your West Perry Athletic Department tribute question of the game. Once again, the, in the form of a Jeopardy question, this 2012 West Perry graduate is the current all-time leader in points scored with 236 career points. His 94 points and 41 goals are also the most in a single season in his senior year back in 2012. Who is he? Who is Jacob Oldacre? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Jacob Oldacre, what, undoubtedly the greatest West Perry boys soccer athlete in history. Just back in 2016, the Jacob Oldacre was inducted to the West Prairie Athletic Hall of Fame. Totally well deserved for Jacob Oldacre. I mean, I don't know what he's up to right now. I hope he's still playing soccer, maybe professionally. But I mean, he's a classmate of mine too. He's a fellow fellow classmate. We both graduated in 2012, 10 years ago. That, that's almost. That's really hard to believe. Like, Ten years ago today, we were in the halls as, uh, as seniors. I mean, that, that, is, that is really cool. Right? Honestly, I mean, it's only been ten years. I mean, yeah, it's been ten years, but it feels so much longer than that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is your West Bay Athletic Department trivia question of the game. We got a really good one on Thursday for you. And you have to tune in on Thursday in... The game against Shippensburg, boys soccer against Shippensburg here in Mustang Stadium thir Thursday night here at home at Mustang Stadium. Earlier today, we we had cross country in action against Greencastle Antrim and Waynesboro, two cross town rivals coming to town here for cross country and the first and the first meet of the year for West Prairie cross country and also it's unfortunate to say the first cross country meet where our beloved head coach Jared uh, Jared didn't make it he passed away this past summer and we wish him and his family the best of players and lost a great coach here at West Prairie Soccer this past summer Later this week, we have our West Bray football team here at home for the first time this season. As the West Bray Mustangs will be here on Friday night under under the lights to take on Junia and the Junia Indians coming to town in non-conference action. West Bray football coming off a huge win on the road this past Friday down the road here at Newport, just 13 miles away from Mustang Stadium. And it was a great game for the Mustangs, but it was more than just Rockford. I mean, it was the first time in 25 years, since 1996, that, that uh, West Prairie Mustangs and Newport Buffaloes faced each other in Newport or in football. Yeah, in Newport or in football. It's really unbelievable. But it was a great win for the Mustangs. And for those who are wondering, we do have breaking news for you, ladies and gentlemen. West Prairie football... I mean, it, probably a lot of people were asking this past weekend, 
when's, when's the next time that West Prairie and Newport are going to face each other in football? Are we going to wait another 25 years? Nope, you're not even going to have to wait that long. They are going to try to get this game in here at Mustang Stadium in 2022. So there you go. We have only one more year to wait for West Perry and Newport to face each other in football. And that would be here next year. So uh, keep an eye on that. I mean, the football schedule won't be released for at least until spring. But yeah, that's some very exciting news for you. That's going to wrap up our West Prairie Athletic Department's halftime report. Uh, we'll be right back in two minutes for the start of the second half. Your score at halftime West Prairie 2, East Princeboro men. We'll be right back. We are right back here at Mustang Stadium, and it looks like both teams are set to resume action here. West Perry had numerous opportunities here in, in the first half, but now the Mustangs kick it off, and just like that, West Perry on the attack here. Press this here. Uh, not a bad idea there from Dominic Padilla. Or excuse me, Caleb Nickel. Caleb Nickel, first time mentioning his name in the game. Garrett Barlow. Passing up to Tony Gray. Tony Gray looking for Dante Padilla, but being well defended there. Garrett Barlow with the interception. Spaceboro on the defense and Looking for a trace racing up by he, it was barely defended, well defended there by the Panthers. And Caleb Nickel took a shot, but easy save there for, for Geld. Caleb Nickel, oh Caleb Nickel, this thing here. You gotta be wondering what. East Pittsburgh head coach Adam Bruner had to say to his Panthers. I mean, Panthers, they're usually a, a much more better team than the way they, they are performing. I mean, it's a new season for them. This, this is the season opener for the Panthers. And right here is Dante Padilla with a shot and it goes way wide. Dante Padilla has his fair share of opportunities. But West Prairie not capitalizing on them. Just two minutes into the second half. No kick given. East 
Greensboro on the attack. We have not seen this very often in the first half from the Panthers, but every time they get attacked, things like these happen. But like what's going on right now with Westbury defense just shutting it down. Again, we want to thank everyone at home for joining us here on the Westbury Athletic Department's YouTube page. My name is Alex Wall, the Golden Pikes of Westbury Athletics. We're bringing an exciting non-conference action in boys soccer, Westbury versus East Pensboro. On a gorgeous Thursday, Tuesday night here, excuse me, Tuesday night. Here at Mustang Stadium. Uh, the, the weather that we have we've had so far this week and uh, that attack was there by number three, Ethan Bonsall, a junior for the Panthers. Right at the 15 yard line and a quick shot for Dante Padilla and ho oh, oh, ho! The goalkeeper was not ready for that. But that goal does count. And Oh man, Dante Padilla with a, a missile getting East Pensboro when they weren't ready. But hey, the officials were in. That goal is going to count. Wow, what a beautiful free kick for Dante Padilla. That's now his second goal of the day. Goal number six on the year. Man, Dante Padilla on fire to start the season. And it's now 3 mil West Perry. Man, that is, I mean, we, we do not see that very often from West Perry, but they, today they are taking full advantage of, of uh, some awkwardness here today from East Pensboro, and they, they are capitalizing on I mean, it. East Pensboro was not right. They, they thought that, uh, that the Mustangs would take their time on this free kick. I mean, it was a, it was a crucial crucial opportunity right at the 15 yard line 25 yards away from the net but the East Pensboro defense and more importantly Kenan Gelb the sophomore goalkeeper was not ready and East Pensboro had to pay for it so mar marvelous goal So now East Pensboro are probably a little disappointed in themselves, and they, they're, trying, they're going to try to get back into this game. As of right now, West Perry has outscored their opponents 14 mil through one, one and a half games, and a good shot there. And I believe that's the first shot of the game for East Pensboro. I mean, they did have a couple of opportunities on Coro on corner kicks like this one coming up here. But, that, but, I mean, that is definitely the first shot of the second half for East Pensboro. Now, now, corner opportunity number four coming. Right, corner kick played in. And good clearance here by the Mustangs. Dante Badia coming up here. Back and forth passing for the Panthers. Tough liner off. Off of Sacre Loy. Sacre Loy coming into the game for the first time. Well, excuse me, no, that was Kevin Nickel. Run here for Trace Racinger. And Racinger gets the call, gets the throw, finds Dante Padilla. Dante Padilla finds Garrett Bartlow. And he finds Johnny Clay. Johnny Clay with three Panthers to throw from, but he goes right through with a shot. And it's a good save there for Caden Bell. Oh, that ball just got past Elvin Albright. And foul gave a free kick for East Pensburg. For those just joining us here, 
about seven minutes into the second half, uh, West Prairie of three mil here. They scored two in the first half. One goal by Dante Padilla and one goal by, by Garrett Bartlow. And then here in the second half, get, or, yeah, here in the second half, Dante Padilla on a, a free kick on the 15 yard line. And right here, great sprint here for Trace Racinger. And goes out for a West Prairie throw. And Dante Padilla to throw it in. Ball pass back to Dante. And oh, good spin move for Dante. He's, he, he did that a couple times against Mifflin County. And a good shot there for Johnny Clegg. And that is going to go out for uh, a West Prairie corner. Dante Padilla to deliver the corner. And, oh, what a header, what a shot for Dominic Padilla, the Padilla brothers working together. Dante delivers the corner, Dominic drills it in, and it's now 4 mil West Perry. That's the first time we've seen that this year, first time in the varsity level for the Padilla brothers. One Badia gets an assist, the other gets the goal. <laughs> and it's now four men. I'll, I'll tell you what he says. That, I mean, a lot of people I've been speaking to since Saturday, a lot of fans here, I must have said, they, uh, I have to agree with him now. It's a, these Padilla brothers, I mean, one, Dante's a senior and Dominic a sophomore. I mean, this is going to be the only, the only year where they will play with each other here at West Perry. And Josiah Trigg has to clear away and no one out there. That, that's a give. That, that's a foul there for on East Bensboro. Free kick for the Mustangs. But yeah, like with, with, the, with Dominic and Dante playing together this year, this West Perry team can be a very tough team to beat. Could that mean bad news for Shippensburg on Thursday? And they're running here for Trace Racinger, back to Dante. Uh, that, that, that's got to be a special moment right there for the Badia family. Like, like these two, like Dominic and Dante, they have been playing together their whole lives. And they, I'm sure they had plenty of, of plays together to score goals. But that was the first in here at West Perry in the varsity level. And that's going to feel something special. And a free kick out the hand of Gail. And it's Johnny Clegg now. Johnny Craig gets on the board for the first time this year. And it's now 5 mil West Perry. These Pensboro fans here are getting a little reckless. Uh, they, they have to be shocked by what their team has done so far in this game. Still got a half an hour yet to go in this game. Here's Garrett Bartlow. I mean, it, it, this Westbury team has, so far for two games, has been dominant. I mean, they, they have not given up one goal yet. And they scored 10 or no, excuse me, they, they scored 11 against Mifflin County, and here already they scored five. And I'm, I'll tell you what, and ladies and gentlemen, I, I mean, this, this West Prairie team, I, I truly believe that this West Prairie team has the potential to do something great this year. And they're already doing great things for two games. I mean, yeah, I mean, they're, they're two non-conference games, but 
I mean, once the Met Pen Cologne officially starts, that, that's when we're really going to see how great this West Prairie team is. I mean, this is a West Prairie team that only had five years a year ago. But they got hot in, in the last three games, winning two of the last three games. But that was their best stretch of the year last year. And this West Prairie team, they only had five wins a year ago. And already they're on the verge of going 2-0 to start the year. Back here for the Mustangs again. Cross, low, uh, back cross there for Johnny Clegg. And, and, yeah, this, this was pretty. Oh, great. Oh, almost a great interception for Kyle Port. That, that's one of the new names we have this year for Best Boy Boy Soccer, Kyle Port. Or, excuse me, no, that was Caleb Mickle. Again, another name we know so well. He has potential to do great things defensively for the Mustangs. 28 minutes left to go in the game. West Prairie up by five. Quick substitution coming in now for East Pensbrook. Number 15, Braden Campbell. Stepping in now for East Pensboro, and now our substitution come on. Number 26, Cooper Bray stepping in for the Panthers. Or no, yeah, also Cooper Bray. Or no, Landon Hart, that, that's who it is, Landon Hart. So sometimes it's hard to see the nine and six. And a shot here and off the, off, oh, good opportunity there for but was that Dante? Was that Dante Padilla right there? I can't tell from way up here who made that shot. Uh, yep, it was. It was Dante Padilla. But a good save there for Caden Gell. But it's going to be a corner opportunity here for the Mustangs. Corner kick played in. And goes over everybody. Dante Padilla is probably going to take it, and he does. And that is going to be a foul called on Dante there. So, free kick given. And East Pensboro wasting little time on the free kick. They know they have work to do if they will complete a, a miraculous up comeback. Like, unbelievable. I mean, five mil. I mean, it's not. It's not. Uh, I mean, it's not impossible to come back down by five, but it is difficult. <laughs> it, it, it's doable, but it's going to be hard. Especially how West Perry has been doing so far in this game to East Pensboro. Dante Padilla with some nice dribbling. Intercepted and in. A nice post there. And who is that? I can't tell from up here who it is. If that's Dante, that's. Is there mercy rule six or seven? That, that, that is Dante. That, that's his third goal of the game last time for back to back games. He's now had. I believe it's that I'll find out for you. Dante Padilla scores again. And now West Bray on the verge again. Gary Bartlow off the top of the goal post. Not the soccer net, the goal post. And that is going to be ruled out of bounds. That, that can be tricky sometimes for, for the officials. Like, he got two different bars there and they're both very close to each other 
And if the top, if it hits the top one, that's ouch. But if it hits the soccer post, that stays in. Dante Badez, third goal of the game. Goal number seven here for Dante Padilla. Unbelievable. It's true. It's unbelievable. Seven goals for Dante Padilla for two games. That's that's 14 points. I mean, who, who knows? I mean, with the way that Dante Padilla has been playing for two games, could Jacob Oldacre's single-season single record be in jeopardy this year? Oh, that that was that was off of Br Braden Wintel of East Pensbone. That that almost went in last time. If that did, that would have been an own goal. But six mil is the score right now. Dante Vidal with three goals in this game. Uh, what a way to start the season for Westbury Soccer and for Dante Vidal. That's going to be one name that every school from here on out is going to need to know. One thing about a couple of people I've talked to since Saturday I've been saying is that the, Dominic, the Dante brothers, Dominic and Dante, uh, it, they could be the next great pair of professional soccer. I mean, it, we usually don't see a lot of brother brother duels that duels that do well together. But right now, these two are, and they, they could. They are saying that some fans are saying that Dalek Badia could be the next Christian Pulisic, and we all know how Christian Pulisic is. I mean, he. But one of the best players in the world right now. He played one year at Hershey High School in the Mid Penn Conference and dominated everybody and went on to win the state championship easily. And then Pulisic went went on to play for Borussia Dortmund in the Bundes Bundesliga League in Germany. Yes. And now a shot and just wide for. Say it again. It's a rolling clock unless there's an injury where they tell you to stop time. So Dominic will deal with the right, shot. Right, so just keep running on the clock. So the mercy rule is in effect, ladies and gentlemen, for those on where, um, if if one team is up by six goals, the So six goals is the mercy rule in which the time has got to keep, keep going. The only times there where the time does stop are for injuries. And oh, we actually have an East Pensboro player down, but no official here for, no word for the officials to stop the clock. But now we got an injured East Pensboro player. i able to get right back up. Good news there for East Pensbury. Can't, can't tell from up here who it is on the other side, the other side of the stadium. The clock has stopped. With 22 minutes and 8 seconds. Definitely something we do not want to see for either team to see players get hurt. Especially if it's this early in the game or early in the season. Good back and forth passing on the far side of the stadium. And now Dante Padilla looking for a cross. And oh, Dominic, but, or excuse me, no, that's Evan Albright. 
and Evan Albright's shot gets blocked. Throwing here for the Mustangs. Looking for a cross. He's saying he finds Garrett Bartlow. Garrett Bartlow finds Dante. Long shot, but good defense shown there by the Panthers, but right back to Dominic Padilla. Scored two goals so far. One goal in this game. Off the assist from Dante. Good defense shown here by East Pensboro. East Pensboro is just really stepping up their defense, and West Prairie just looking to run a clock. I mean, there's still loads of clock left. Substitutions coming now for both teams. That ball, oh, almost a bad idea for. East Pensboro's Giovanni Esposito. Hang on to the ball, and here's Evan Albright. Evan Albright looking for Johnny Clegg, but taken there by Dante Padilla. Dante Padilla with a long shot, but it was off of East Pensboro defender, and it's going to go to Caden Gill. Off of Evan Albright. Yeah. Oh, this, this time there by Johnny Clay. Looking for the chest bump. And cleared away for by the Mustangs. Here's Garrett Bartlow and Dominic Padilla. Or excuse me, no, that's Johnny Clay. Here's Bryce Turok way out here. And right here is. Ethan Dodson and a shot. To, oh, a good shot there by Tony. A good save there for Gelb. Halfway through the second half. West Perry up by five. East Pensboro needs to be careful and Good defense show by Dobson. Here's Evan Albright. Back to Johnny. Johnny Craig. Passing it up. East Pensboro, they only had three shots on goal in this game. But one here in the second half. Oh, a, oh, almost a big tackle, big wrist there by Carter Drum, and he's been doing okay on defense. Before nine go five goals, a long shot there goes way off for Ethan Dots. Give it back, three. Here's Dante, pass out to Johnny Clegg. You know, it's very, maybe Dante is getting tired of scoring goals. I mean, he's not running as much. And yeah, right there, Dante lo looking for um, another teammate there, but there was nobody there. You know, maybe Dante is trying to take, trying to relax a little bit. But here come more substitutions here, two more substitutions for the Mustang. Throw in for the Mustangs. 
points, Evan Albright and Albright shot way off. Substitution coming in now for the East Pensboro. East Pensboro Panthers. Season opener for the Panthers here at Mustang Stadium. And right now for East Pensboro and head coach Adam Bruner cannot be too happy with how they start the season. Again, with East Pensboro, they will be at home on Thursday for their home opener and also their first game in the mid Penn Capital Division when they host Harrisburg, the Harrisburg Coopers, on Thursday. Reception here for Johnny Clay and at their take is Garrett Bartlow, Evan Albright, or to Evan Dodson. Evan Dodson but looking for who who is that? I don't, I don't know who that is. Maybe where, oh that's Dalton Young. So one of the younger guys coming in now for the Mustangs. And right, right you're up by six. Uh, six mil is the score right now. Right, you're up by six. With 15 minutes left to go, like, yeah, you're gonna put in some of your younger guys. That, that's what West Perry did against Mifflin County on Saturday when they were up by at least eight, I think, <laughs> and they started putting some of the younger guys in. Substitution coming now, Ethan Dodson stepping out. Yes, no, Evan Albright stepping out. Coming in, and there's Garrett Bartlow. But Michael Weaver coming in now for the Mustangs, one of the younger guys, a freshman. There's Garrett Bartlow. Oh, looking to beat the, some Panthers off the dribble. There is number 15, Zachary Loy, just came back in for the Mustangs. And a couple young guys, a couple of the junior varsity guys coming in now to step in. I mean, that, that's always great to see. I mean, it doesn't matter what, what team it is. I mean, great for West Perry. It could be great for East Pensboro if the score was the other way around. But at any time a team can put in some of the younger guys, some of the JV guys in, uh, that, that's got to mean something special, it's especially if like they score, <laughs> which was the case for Dalton Young, uh, what, one of the junior varsity guys scoring a goal against Mifflin County on Saturday. But then again, when you got some of the younger guys out, and ooh. Whistle blown. And this is one of the few times where Brandon Washinger had to touch the ball. <laughs> I mean, he hasn't had much action all night. Four substitutions coming in now. Matthew Adams now, number 26, coming in. Raiden McKeever also in for the Mustangs. And number two, Tanner Sickler. He didn't get the chance to play against Mifflin County, but Tanner Sickler is now in the game. So th this is pretty much the entire West Perry Mustang Junior varsity team. And a shot. And there's got to be a corner opportunity for East Pensboro. Just the fifth corner for East Pensboro in this game. Second straight here for the Panthers. Less than 12 minutes left to go here in the game. And it looks like the Mustangs are on their way to starting the year 2 0. And having a perfect non conference season. 
That ball got away from Cole Kinshaw. And it's going to be a goal kick for the Mustangs. Let's pray Junior Varsity team. Before this game, they had a nice 3 0 victory to go 2 0. So, what, one thing that East Pensboro is probably hoping to do right now is to get on the board. Mifflin County didn't get, didn't get on the board on Saturday. But East Pensboro, they, they know that they, they can against the. This young West Prairie team on the field right now. But West Prairie defense st stepping up. It's a great sight to see. And West Prairie, I mean, you, you don't have to, you don't necessarily have to score any more goals. I mean, if you get one more, great. If, if not, I mean, at least do, do your best on defense because that's what East Pittsburgh has been doing now for the last couple minutes. Stepping up on offense. But one thing that I have noticed from East Pensboro in this game, not a lot of communication. Uh, like they, they see when a guy is open, but as far as talking goes, not so much. Here's Brandon McKeever. Pass it down to Bryce Turok. Bryce Turok, one of those guys that regularly plays Junior Farsley and Farsley. Oh, yeah. Last year, Torak was in, uh, was in JV, and then he got to play a little bit in the Farsley level, but this year he's all Farsley. So he's in the JV team this year. Ball unsuccessful here for East Pensburg. Nine minutes left to go here in the game. West Prairie up by six. Once again, good defense shown here by West Prairie against East Pensburg. Pass really stepped up now on offense. <clears throat> But right now I can tell you is that our star player of the game is, is not going to be uh, uh, Brandon Washington. I mean, he only had to face a, a couple of shots, sure, but mo mostly it's been the West Prairie defense that has been dominant, and uh, we're going to have an injury timeout here. Again, Mercy will weigh up by six goals. The clock stops on an injury, and which for here... That that is Gary Demasek. Got a couple of shots in this game back in the first half. But fortunately for him, he's able to get up and walk off the field with no help whatsoever. Free kick here for Westbury. Has to kick it back, and they they kick it right to. I I mean anytime it has, it has to be. Brought back to East Pensburg. I guess Johnny Craig did not know that. Or excuse me, no, that was Sack Byers. And for a ball, unsuccessful. Goes right to Gelp. Gelp was sophomore for East Pensboro. Cannot be too happy with his first career start in the varsity level. Decent round there for number 26. I don't have a number 26 on the last one. Oh, excuse me, there we go, Matthew Adams. Third ball, unsuccessful, but got to be cleared away by Michael Weaver. 
seven man slot. So probably most likely, probably not going to be as large of a win as it was on Saturday for him for the Mustangs, but a good performance overall. I mean, six six goals, three of them by Dante Padilla. And we can already tell you right now that our best party athletic department player of the game for a second straight game, Dante Padilla. I mean, three goals and back-to-back -back hat tricks to start the year. Let's pray be looking for more. And I would tell you for Ethan Dodson goes to waste. And a long shot here for Weaver. Not, not a chance for God. They didn't even get up to the net. It's just about to go wide. But taken by Gary. For the Panthers and good cross, but handled well by the Mustang defense. If you're a West Prairie fan right now, you're probably you probably got to be very excited for the start of the year for West Prairie boys soccer. They have been dominant through the first two games. Now scoring their opponents 17 to nothing. That's Turok. Opportunity here for Chase Reisinger. Or no, excuse me, that's Matthew Adam. Play five Brandon McKeever. Substitutions coming now for both teams. Number eight, Justin Clay. Johnny's brother coming in now. Justin Clay, he's, he, he's on our junior varsity roster, but not on our varsity roster here. And so, big moment for a for young man, Justin Clay. If you're Johnny right now, you gotta be excited for your younger brother. I finally going out there and getting the varsity experience. He didn't get a chance to play live on Saturday against Mifflin County. But here he is tonight, Justin Clay, freshman. Number eight. Ball well, gets away. Bryce Turok has to clear it away. Three and a half minutes left to go here in the game. West Prairie well on their way to a 2 0 start. Definitely a great way for boys, West Prairie boys soccer to start the season. I mean, 2-0, I mean, it, it, that's a, probably a bigger deal in the NFL, which actually starts this week. I don't know, the N NFL is back. Uh, Tampa Bay hosting the Dallas Cowboys on Thursday night. And we're going to have boys soccer here at home on Thursday against Shippensburg. Now, of course, that game will be streamed live. Here on the West Prairie Athletic Park's YouTube page. And if you're an Eagles fan, you're probably more excited for Sunday against Atlanta. I think that's where we're playing. Atlanta, yeah. And me and my fellow Pittsburgh Steelers fans, we're excited for Sunday. And they go to Buffalo to take on the Bills. Interesting matchup for week one. Final two minutes left on the clock here. 
corner kick coming for East Pensboro. And this East Pensboro team, they, they're never a bad program. I mean, they, like last year, they went six, five, and three. Six wins, five losses, three draws. And they're not a bad team. They, they just, they face tough competition every year. And, and this East Pensboro team, they, they can be a really good team. And right now, West Prairie just showing that, hey, we're, we're in it this year. Like, we, we are here to have a great year from uh, after only having five wins a year ago. And now an opportunity here for the Mustangs, but the East Pensboro defense just too much. Good run there for Matthew Adams. Looking for his first goal, but defended well by Ethan Bonsall. Final minute here at Mustang Stadium. Get ready for Shippensburg on Thursday. I mean, Shippensburg usually a really good team every year. If you're Shippensburg right now, you're probably wondering, man, this West Bay team, they, they're good. <laughs> they're really good right now. And it uh, looks like West Bay is just going to whistle blown here. The clock's still running. That, okay, now, now the clock has stopped. The, I'd, like to, I'd like Trenner here, but Spencer and Corey had to rush down the field, but no, um, no interest to report. Final 10 seconds here. East Pensboro just dripping around. And the West Prairie Mustangs off to a flying start. With a 2-0 two, two start. And they beat the East Pensboro Panthers 6-0. Here at Mustangs Day, a great start for the West Prairie Mustangs. 11, 11 nothing. And wait, never mind that scoreboard, I'm just resetting it. 11 mil on Saturday, 6 mil today. 17 goals, four in the first two games, and zero goals against through two games. A great. Great way for West Bay soccer to start this season. Now 2-0, and they will start mid Penn Colonial Division action on Thursday here at home, the third straight home game for the Mustangs to start the year. As they will host the Shippensburg Greyhounds. That will be our next broadcast here on the West Bay Athletic Furnace YouTube page. That game will start at 7 o'clock. For East Pennsboro, they'll be right back at it tomorrow. East Pensboro will be at home for their home opener and also their opener in the Mid Penn Capital Division as they host the Harrisburg High School Cougars tomorrow at 7 30. Good luck to East Pensboro for the rest of the season. Once again, West Bay will be at home here on Thursday night against Shippensburg to start action in the Mid Penn Colonial Division. That's going to do it for us here at West Prairie High School. I'm here at Mustang Stadium on behalf of our athletic director, Ryan Anderson, our public address announcer, Matt Rudy, and high school principal, Chris Rowan, and all of us here at West Prairie High School. Thank you for watching. This has been a presentation of West Prairie Boys Soccer exclusively on the West Prairie Athletic Barnes YouTube page. I am Alex Wall, the Golden Pipes of West Prairie Athletics, and I will see you here on Thursday night for boys soccer against Shippensburg. Good night, everybody.